Are you maximizing the amount of work you get done in the gym that will help you improve in the sport? Oftentimes our warmups are taken for granted and we don't use them and apply them to getting better at the sport. Hey, what's going on guys? A little bit of a coaching video today. We're gonna to be putting these out once a month, kind of give you guys some insights into some things you should be thinking about during your training, maybe during your programming or during competitions. We're just gonna look at kind of rounding you into a better athlete through these coaching posts. The topic we're hitting on today is being intentional, whether that be you know in your training, in your recovery, in your nutrition even. Um, but today we're gonna specifically hit on being intentional with your warmups and your cool downs. So how do we do this exactly? In our warmups, we can use them for more than just prepping the body for whatever it is we're about to tackle inside of our training session. They can also be a part of our training session. One way we can do this guys is through movement work. Part of being a CrossFitter is having really efficient movement quality and being able to breathe through all your range of motion. There's a video, or that's kind of what we hit on in the off season work. If you guys have some intense training sessions, we wanna make sure our tissues, our joints, our patterns are very open. So we're able to breathe in all of our positions. T-spine is a big thing, T-spine rotation, thoracic extension, our hinging patterns, our pressing patterns, shoulder flexion, squatting patterns, making sure our hip flexors are loose, uh, making sure our external rotation is super open in, our, in the bottom of our squat, making sure our thoracic extension is good in the bottom of our squat. So we can use our warm up to open those positions up and make sure that we're doing, or we're prepping ourselves for being able to breathe inside of more intense workouts. This can include activation, this can also include some rehab work that you have gotten from your physical therapist. The next thing we have is skill work. This is something that can be added into our warmups and I think it's something that's very neglected in our warmups. If you're, say, let's, let's say you're snatching um, and you know you have issues pulling the bar through the middle of your rep because your glutes aren't activated, your posterior chain's not activated. You can do something in your warmup where maybe it's every three minutes you're doing a 10 cal, eight cal bike, 10 glute bridges, 20 second straight leg glute bridge, and then you're grabbing a barbell for the remainder of that three minute window, whatever that might be, and you're just working on pulling that bar into the hips, pulling that bar into the hips, focusing on, on uh, creating good glute contraction, good hamstring uh, contraction to stay tight through the middle of that pull. And now you're working that skill of making sure that bar is pulling into, into the hips. This is also gonna prepare the tissues. It's gonna prepare the neuromuscular system. It's gonna prepare your joints to be able to start snatching. So it's still acting as a warm-up, but now we're incorporating some skill work into that warm-up. The warm-up can also be great for two other things, aerobic work and volume work. So we can also get extra aerobic volume work into our warm-ups uh, by doing a multitude of different things on the machines by keeping it at a lower heart rate. Um, a lot of people are talking about zone two right now, so this is kind of what they're, a warm-up can help with is developing that aerobic work. We can even throw in simple movements, like let's say you need a lot more squat volume. We can throw in a 15 minute EMOM, seven cal echo bike and seven air squats every minute on the minute for 15 minutes. Now we all of a sudden have over 100 squat contractions that we just developed inside of an easy warm up for you. And now you might be warm for a squatting workout or just a workout in general. So make sure that you guys are being intentional about your warm ups and whatever it is you might need for the sport to get you better at the sport. The same thing can be said about your cool down. Walking, great way to cool down, great way to build your aerobic system. In a lot of endurance sports, they talk about an 80 20 rule. 80% of their volume is done at lower intensities. 20% of their volume is done at higher intensities. In CrossFit, we have a ton of volume that is done at higher intensities, and we often miss out on that lower intensity range. Walking for your cool down is a great way to drive up that lower in volume range by putting very minimal stress on your body. Easy 15, 20 minute walk out in the sun after you guys get done with your session will give you more vitamin D, um, it'll decompress you because walking outside, letting things pass is shown to and get you into a more of a parasympathetic state. Clear your mind if you, if you leave your phone, get your breathing patterns right, and we're continuing to get blood flow. So this is extra aerobic work that you guys can add into 
the end of your sessions. Um, recovery work, uh, obviously foam rolling, some activation work, it can also be thrown into here. But this is, this is meant to keep the blood flowing, relieve some of the tension so that we do have good movement patterns when we come back to our next training session. We're not so tight that we end up not being able to do a chest to bar efficiently or get into a good top position on a handstand push-up. Doing some of this recovery work will set you up for success later down the road in training, future training sessions. The last thing is, again, we can throw in more movement work here. Lauren with uh, Polivka with Repair, Perform, Recover, um, she sponsored several of our teams and some of our athletes in the past, has a great saying for this, don't leave the gym looking like your last rep. So always try and do something to create a better movement quality before you leave the gym. And this is something that you definitely need to be intentional about because it's very easy to finish your session, sit on the ground for 20 minutes, talk with your friends on a maybe like lightly foam rolling and then just leave the gym. So make sure that you guys are intentional about that movement work at the end of your session. And like Lauren says, don't leave the gym looking like your last rep. So. Hopefully this gives you guys some good insight, gives you guys some things to think about for your warm up, for your cool down. These are two very underutilized aspects of the sport that kind of, I think the, at the elite level people are doing it, but kind of in that bubble semis, bubble quarterfinal to semi level, it's not a utilized enough tool for athletes. Um, so if you guys need any help, um, you can always reach out to us. We'd love to be able to answer some questions about this, give you guys some ideas of how to incorporate this into your training. Hopefully this helps you guys out.